Today we are going to be taking a look at the AMD Ryzen 1600 up against the Intel i7-7700K to answer the question, what is the best gaming CPU for the money right now? And is it really worth spending that extra money for an Intel system? Because going into this, I already knew that the 7700K would be faster than the 1600 in terms of IPC. This is no secret to most enthusiasts out there that have been following Ryzen since its release, but the big question is whether or not it's worth the added cost for most consumers out there. The two builds I'm using for today's testing have both been featured on the channel in the past with dedicated build videos and other benchmarking scenarios. The first system is the Ryzen Gladiator build that I covered just recently with the Ryzen 1600 CPU, and the Intel system is my Frame Raider build. Both systems were paired with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory that I had clocked at 2933 megahertz and an overclocked GTX 1080. So for the 1080, I had an additional 200 megahertz on the core and 300 megahertz on the memory, which saw our core clock hovering around 2025 to 2075 megahertz, depending on GPU boost. Each of the processors were also overclocked to the highest that they would go, and both are at the clocks, which should be achievable, I feel, by most people getting these CPUs if you do choose to overclock. So the 7700K was at 5 gigahertz, and the Ryzen 1600 was at 3.8 gigahertz. As I mentioned, that was the highest stable overclock that I could get on these CPUs, so that's why I chose to run the test this way. I know some people may want to see these CPUs at the same clock speed, but if I were to downclock, the 7700K to meet the 1600 at 3.8 gigahertz, I'm not really sure what that would seek to accomplish apart from crippling Intel's performance. Yes, it does give us an apples to apples comparison, but realistically, who in their right mind is going to buy a CPU to underclock it? If you happen to disagree with that, then I look forward to your criticism in the comments below. But let's move into the performance now, which was all tested at 1080p on high settings with the latest NVIDIA driver 382.33. I chose 1080p on high so that we could see which CPU could deliver the most frames per second to the end user. I opted not to include 1440p and other resolutions because being that this is a CPU comparison, we would only become more GPU bound as the resolution is increased. Something that I've previously validated in Ryzen versus Intel testing where 4K performance was included. So starting off with the averages here, we see a very commanding lead on the 7700K winning by about 10 to 20 FPS in the majority of games tested. But there were a few outliers like Metro Last Light that won by a significant margin to the Ryzen 1600 that I can't quite explain since I know that that benchmark uses every thread on a given CPU, but my guess is that the IPC is a factor coming into play somewhere on that benchmark. When testing Rising Storm 2 Vietnam, where the largest difference was observed, seeing the 7700K average 230 FPS versus the 125 on Ryzen 1600, we get to see a very specific scenario where the IPC performance of the 7700K helps a lot. The reason for this is that the engine being used is Unreal Engine 3 and is limited to operating on one to two cores that you can see in the thread utilization. So being that the 7700K is much faster in terms of IPC and is able to be overclocked more than the 1600, it's no wonder why Intel took such a commanding lead in this particular game. This is, however, something that we won't likely see very much in the future apart from indie games and very unoptimized AAA titles. I also want to include my graph here for the 1% lows as the averages only tell one story, but nothing here really stood out to me. Pretty much just more of the same as the averages. The 7700K wins by about 10 to 20 FPS in the majority of games, with the exceptions being Metro Last Light and Rising Storm 2 Vietnam, Rising Storm 2 Vietnam where it got a lot more than 10 to 20 FPS difference over the Ryzen 1600. So facts and figures decide with many consumers trying to make a purchase decision, should these numbers be a concern for you if you're contemplating a Ryzen PC build? For me, they're not really that worrying as I feel the additional cores and threads greatly outweigh the game performance on Kaby Lake. Yes, Kaby Lake can push more frames in this type of isolated testing, but as you increase graphics options and resolution, that difference will be greatly reduced and in some cases gone altogether. And for the instances where it isn't, I doubt many people can spot the difference between 169 and 187 frames per second, for instance, in a game like Rainbow Six Siege. 
There's also the future to consider where I think more AAA titles will utilize the cores and threads available. I'm seeing that already in new titles released like Prey that I tested here where every single thread was utilized and that is how it should be in modern gaming titles. So right now on Amazon for just the motherboard and CPU on the Intel side, you're looking at $530 to get started before you even begin to factor in the GPU, RAM, and other things. The Ryzen 1600, on the, other, on the other hand, with the Asus X370 board that I used here, came in at just over $350. I actually got my board for $105, so if you can find a deal like that, then you're gonna, ha then you're gonna have it made. But there are several B350 boards you can get for, for that price exactly. On Amazon right now, for instance, they have an MSI and a Gigabyte bundle for the Ryzen 1600 CPU at $310 with the motherboard included. For those of you keeping track, that is less than just the Intel i7-7700K I used here today. So that's what you really need to consider. Is it worth spending an extra $200 or more for an Intel CPU and motherboard combo to get this level of performance? If you want to throw a 1080 Ti and pair it with a 7700K and a 240Hz 1080p monitor, then sure, I guess it's worth it. But for most people, it probably won't be, and the likelihood you'll ever feel that performance loss is unlikely, especially with a cheaper GPU or increased resolution and graphics settings. But as always, I look forward to reading through your comments down below on the testing here today between the 1600 and the 7700K. If you're still trying to make a purchase decision out there and you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll try to answer as many as possible or maybe the other viewers will be able to come in and help you guys as well. But if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like on it down below and subscribe if you're not already for more CPU and GPU showdowns in the future. And I will catch you guys next time. Terrible.